Hey, I want to do a little review here on this um, King James Version Stored Study Bible. And you can see what it says here is Red Letter Old and New Testament Margin Study Guide, uh, Book Summaries and Study Aids, Topical Concordance. And of course, I only got the cover on top of here. Black Genuine Leather. Uh, really neat. This little thing here, this little sword says Hebrews 4. Uh, verse 7. I have to look into that so what it reads. Well, anyway, that's the. Um, I'm sorry for any background noise. Back of it. And the box says genuine giant print, black genuine leather. I, I really like the sword detail on there. That's pretty cool. It's like a one handed sword. I wonder if anybody can make that. Can I just make that sword? Make it real. Just make a real KJV type sword. That would be so cool. Hmm. Anyway, that's so neat. That might be a project for one of you uh, blacksmiths out there. Forging fire. Forging a um, sword just like this. Like a dill point. <laughs> anyway, I'm doing this one handed now. I was doing it in another way where, you know, I was. Um, I had it uh, the other way around, but I'm doing it one-handed now so you can get better detail. So all this information stuff is in this one here. This one we have right here is a black one. I really would like to index, but they didn't have that one on there. Or I just got the wrong one. I, don't, I wouldn't look hard enough. ISBN numbers right here and all that stuff. You can see those and pause it and look for yourself. And it comes from Whitaker House. Uh, 1030 Hunt Valley Circle, New Kensington, Pennsylvania, WhitakerHouse.com. Uh, it also does the King James Version Easy Read. Of course, I don't like that kind. I like the regular King James Version. The Sword Emblem. Words for Word and Red Letter Old Testament. Red Letter Old and um, whatever it says, a registered trademark. So, Whitaker House. Print in Korea. I'd rather for it to be printed in America, but I'm not going to argue about that too much. But anyway, here's some other stuff. Detail, you can find the ceiling here. I'm trying to do one-handed, of course. Um, the features, the, all that and other. 50-point style. And it gives you an example there and tells you all that stuff. Here's the website right there, whitakerhouse.com, word for word. And so let's take a look at the Bible itself. And there's a little features in here. Um, it gives you um, a reading plan and stuff like that. Uh, again, it's kind of the flocticityness, uh, flocticity rather, is it's kind of stiff because he's got genuine leather on top of this um, card stock type of stuff, and that just covers that part of it up. So, you know, it kind of reminds me a little bit on this part of a Thompson um, large print. Of course, you've got the little presentation thing there. Tells you what it does here. Uh, special margin edition. I don't see nothing too much about the margin other than things are in it. You know, it's not a wide margin, of course. Um, it tells you, you know, how you could probably... You know, do your little plan stuff, a human name's guide, red letter edition, box text, uh, marginal markings, other special features. You need some more mineral parts here. The basic outline of the Bible, uh, right there. Names and attributes of God, that's pretty neat. Strong one, L, L O I, the mighty one. So it's got some things in here that the, um, that your Thompson might not have, but you know, there's a lot of things that this one will have that the Thompson doesn't have. If you kind of cross the two over together, that'd be great. Something just popped on here about Caitlyn Jenner. Like, I really care about Bruce Jenner. <laughs> I mean, I pray for him and everything, but I don't care what's so, all that special stuff. Caitlyn Jenner does so and so today. Because, like, he's the only New one episode. that matters. That's transgender because he's rich. Yeah. Attributes of God, other chapters, beauty of bands, whatever that's in. Here's a little thing here, these codes. You can see all these codes out through the 
text to the bottom on this what this codes mean. Uh, G4R and all that stuff and P and 18 and all that other stuff. David Daniel said he has one of these. Matter of fact, I uh, didn't really say too much whether it, he enjoyed it or what, but uh, I guess he does. Um, tells you what page every chapter is on uh, of the book, you know, that and the other. Um, there's like it, it starts renumbering at Genesis, things of that nature, and um, so you don't have it. It doesn't like the Thompson Bible. It, mark, it um, goes all the way through in numbers, but on this one it doesn't. Like it also has underlined words, like this one right here, in boiled, bold rather, and, it's, and that means it's in the bud. These archaic type of words. Um, which I think are really important even for today. And the paper is pretty flimsy. Um, I don't think that's any of the paper at all. Um, anyway, it's pretty flimsy, so you got to be careful about how you turn it off. And of course, it's a red letter all the way through. The only person, the only one I ever seen like that was um, Jimmy Swaggart's Expositor Study Bible. But his Bible isn't really, even though it says King James Version, it's not really because they change things in it. If you change the text in the King James Version Bible, you might as well uh, forget it. It's not going to be King James Version anymore. But I guess he thinks he's the king of uh, of, uh, of uh, um, Sun Life or Swagger Ministry. So, you know, it depends on how you look at it, I guess. And they got like topical studies, outline surveys on each chapter, like Nehemiah here. Things of that nature. Um, interesting stuff. Um, and you get down here to the back, and it's got all kind of neat stuff. And then, you know, and I'm just finding some of this stuff as I'm talking to you. As I, Excuse me, as I'm making this video. And uh, what time is this? And when I come here, you got the genealogies. Pretty neat. Favorite Bible stories. I'm kind of going backwards here. I don't mean to. Um, let's see here. Turn it back here to Revelation. There we go. So you can see it starts at Revelation. It starts remembering Revelation. So it's about 450 some odd pages in Revelation. 452 to be exact. Treasury of the Bible. So you got you got all your Bible here, most of it here, and then you got this part of it, which kind of reminds me of a Thompson chain reference, because you know in the very bottom there you got the maps. <clears throat> it's got a big concordance and all this other stuff after the Bible, and then it goes in the you know gets pretty thick, and then it talks about the um the creationist defense. Oh, that's pretty interesting. Of the king. Oh wow! Let me read this. Institute for Creation Research. That looks really interesting. Let's see what it says here, real quick. It says, "In this day of rapid change, while many Christians suddenly started using one of the many uh, modern English translations of the Bible, in ASB, NIV, NIV, NRSV, NKJV, have been in the long." Used King James Version, read and loved, read and loved by English speaking people of all ages and walks of life for over 10 generations. It may be appropriate to review a few of the reasons why many creationists, including this writer, still prefer to use the latter. Praise God, I didn't even see that, and I'm glad to hear it. That's going to be some interesting reading right there. And that's page 457. So if you get one of these, check that out on page 457 in the back of your Bible. Um, which version um, best renders original manuscripts? And hey, I think the King James does. I'm sure he agrees. I just ain't got a chance to read it yet. I'll have to see what he says. I might take it to work with me tonight and read it. Uh, what about the archaic languages? It's in the King James. Um, other stuff to read here. Conclusion, postscript, Dr. Moore's is found in prayer in prison emeritus of Institute for Creation Research. Hmm. 
I've heard a lot of places like that before, and I didn't know that was Santee, California. I bet David David knows about that place. I'm gonna ask him about that. I know. I bet he knows him pretty well, or knows of him pretty well. Um. Anyway, it's got stuff here. Divine inspiration. Oh wow! Wow! I just hit a treasure trove here. The divine inspiration of the Bible. Um. It's divine inspiring introduction. Things like that. I'm gonna love reading this stuff. It's gonna give me chill bumps, huh? And uh. Talking to you, son. Hi. Oh, just talking. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> uh, other stuff got here. God's plan: men and women were called to serve Him. A list of such individuals f follows with appropriate headings suggested. The people in the scripture behind them. Uh, a brief survey of. Daniel chapter 9, the prophecy of the 70 weeks and years. It's got a lot of stuff in here. The modern history of Israel and its prophecy, the prophecy, the nation of Israel, God's son in history and prophecy, topological comparisons concerning modern Israel. Wow. Look at this. I've seen this before. Well, of course, I just now looked at it. <laughs> Of uh, the head, the body, and the midsection, and the legs, of and the feet, the clay, and iron. Um, talking about what Nebuchadnezzar's dream was all about. Except I know nothing about that. The mystery of Matthew's three sets of 14 generations. Yeah, I've always wondered that. And uh, the land and the people in the Bible. Geology, topography, um, stuff like that. Wow. I'm just getting into this stuff. Huh. The Jewish calendar. All that stuff. Brother Dunn, I think you'd have a, a time in this sucker. He's asking me what I think about certain Bibles and dispensation. But I'm like, ah, buddy, I have no idea. I don't even know what that is. I don't really care about dispensation. <clears throat> the sensational stuff. I'm sure there's some differences in here when talking about the origin of the universe and the origin of life. Hopefully, they don't talk about anything that concerns the gap theory, because I don't believe there's a gap theory. You know, and um, I'm, I'm adamant against that because the Bible doesn't say anything about it. Origin of species, species, species. Um, where they came from. It's not talking about Darwinism. That that you know that. That he evolved, I'm sure. Uh, explains against it. Uh, not, never cited one single proved example of the origin of the new species by natural selection or by any other process. His book was sheer speculation and contrived argumentation with no factual proof, whatever. Furthermore, since Darwin published his book, thousands of evolutionists have tried to produce a new species. Not one has succeeded, as one of Britain's top evolutionists has admitted. No one has ever produced a new species by mechani mechanism, mechani mechanisms sorry, of natural selection. No one has ever gotten near it. Okay, that's just part of the things you can read. And this Bible is really thick, so I don't know if we should go through the whole thing. Because... You know, I don't want to go over 20 minutes. I want to keep your attention. I don't want to bore you to death. The views of, um, here we go, Brother Nunn, or somebody else. Um, view of millennial, millennial, uh, millennial pre-millennial, post-millennial, amillennial. And son, don't ask me what that's about because <laughs> it gets more confusing every time I think about it. So, if you hear me over here talking, don't ask me what it means because... It's hard to explain. Three decisive wars. The problem about Megiddo and Armageddon and all that, whatever. Um, modern electronics and anti-prophecy. Earthquakes prophesied in the final days. Northern Turkey. Uh, tells about how many people were killed and things. Like, uh, January 1556, Shinsei, China. 830,000 killed. And let's see here. That was a um, 
Let's see here. Kobe Japan, 6.9. Increasing stuff in the flood and stuff. In town floods prophesied. Uh, flood metaphor. Crossing the Red Sea. 